Gloria Graham shot to stardom and eternal fame after appearing in the Christmas classic It's a Wonderful Life. Yet if her name isn't as well known today, maybe that's because this ingenue's life never got a happy holiday ending. Far from it. The Oscar winner was the go-to actress for roles such as Good Time Gal and Femme Fatale, but her scandalous personal life led to a fall from grace. How Gloria Graham's affair with her stepson made her a Hollywood outcast. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Gloria Graham, the Hollywood Temptress. The troubled siren of film noir, Gloria Graham. Gloria Graham might well have been concocted in a lab experiment to create a classic Hollywood star. That's assuming the experiment included not only looks and talent, but also the haunted arc of a screen goddess. Early success and Oscar, a string of marriages, struggles with body image, scandal and, after a certain age, a vanishing act. She was the go-to actress when directors needed a good time gal, gangsters moll or femme fatale, but her scandalous personal life led to a massive fall from grace. Gloria Graham rose from acting on the stage in high school to becoming one of the most accomplished film actresses in Hollywood. Though the pretty celebrity had many challenges in her career and relationships, she was still able to star in many movies. This is a feat many celebrities work for throughout their lifetime. She attracted public attention for many reasons, including being one of the richest and most popular movie actresses. She was also known for her failed marriages. In the 1950s, the Gloria Graham actress images were all over the screen as the American television star was making waves in the industry. For film noir buffs, Gloria Graham was a goddess of the genre, starring in such films as Nicholas Ray's 1950 In a Lonely Place and Fritz Lang's 1953 The Big Heat, in which her face was on the losing end of a thrown pot of boiling water. She could make the most out of a small scene, winning the Supporting Actress Oscar for the 1952's The Bad and the Beautiful. She's on screen for 9 minutes 32 seconds. And musical fans know her as a do Annie in 1955's Oklahoma, The Girl Who Can't Say No. Many people knew her as an actress with good imagination and curiosity. Besides, she was quite skillful, strong-willed, spontaneous and dedicated, and she had many close relatives who were equally popular like her. James Ray was one of them. What James Ray-Gloria Graham relationship turned out to be instead of that of a son and a mother was disgusting to many of her fans. Graham was born Gloria Hallwood in Los Angeles, California. Reginald Michael Bloxham Hallward, her father, was an architect and author, and her mother, Jean McDougall, who used the stage name Jean Graham, was a British stage actress and acting teacher. The couple had another daughter, Joy Hallward, an actress who married the brother of Robert Mitchum. McDougall taught her younger daughter acting during her childhood and adolescence. Graham was exposed to Hollywood's inner workings from a very young age. The talented actress had already started professional acting as of the time she was in high school. When she was still a teenager, Graham dropped out of Hollywood High School to pursue her dreams of becoming an actress. If you can't quite peg Gloria Graham down, you aren't alone. Neither could studio boss Louis B. Mayer, who gave her her first Hollywood contract, and then didn't know what to do with her. Louis B. Mayer spotted her, liked what he saw, and signed her to a $250 a week contract. It was 1944. Two years later, he loaned her out to Columbia and her performance. Of all people, it was Frank Capra who helped define the dual sides of her natural earthiness when he cast her in It's a Wonderful Life. Despite a featured role in It's a Wonderful Life, MGM did not believe she had the potential for major success. As the town flirt Violet, Graham is clearly having a blast playing a woman whose coquettishness drives some of the film's funniest scenes. But the unexpected time flip that turns homely Bedford Falls into seamy Pottersville 
foreshadows Graham's status as a film noir icon. In Capra's alternative timeline, Violet's small town cheer gets curdled by years in a town shaped by crime and economic depression. In her brief moments, she displays all the bitterness at being failed by the American dream that defines the noir mood. She projected a sexy image that LB felt did not quite fit into MGM's rigid style system, though co-workers and fans alike described Graham as serious and talented. Some also noted that she was a bit loony, so he sold her contract to RKO. At her new studio, Crossfire earned her an Oscar nomination and made her a star. Despite her enhanced standing, she was still loaned out by RKO to Columbia, MGM and others. Although only on screen for a total of a little over nine minutes, she won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar for MGM's The Bad and the Beautiful. Graham was known in Hollywood as the go-to girl for femme fatales. If a director was casting around for a sultry, morally ambiguous blonde for an upcoming film noir, chances are Graham's name was on the table. In contrast to her bombshell image, Graham was very near-sighted in real life and often had to wear glasses. Graham was infamously insecure about her upper lip and thought it was too small and thin to be beautiful. To compensate, she would stuff cotton in her mouth to give it a plump appearance, but this had disturbing consequences. Multiple co-stars got a nasty surprise when the wadding fell out of her mouth during some particularly steamy kissing scenes. The actress was an early fan of plastic surgery. She started with smaller procedures around her lips, but soon moved on to larger and more obvious changes. As her niece put it, she carved herself up, trying to make herself into an image of beauty she felt should exist, but didn't. Apparently, others saw her as a beautiful person, but she never did. In the years that followed, her talent and timeless beauty was enough to earn her roles in a number of classic movies, alongside famous leading men like Humphrey Bogart. Her short but stellar cameo in the 1950 film The Bad and the Beautiful earned her an Oscar. She held the record for the shortest performance to win an Academy Award until Beatrice Strait beat her record in 1977. Gloria also appeared in numerous television shows throughout the 60s, including The Fugitive, The Outer Limits and Burke's Law. Still, her accomplishments aren't what people remember the most about the notorious film noir Siren. Gloria's career was filled with scandal early on, and by the late 70s her star began to fade. Gloria's fall from grace happened fast, and frankly, she had no one but herself to blame. Her image hardened as the mysterious bad girl of noir cinema. She went from starring in big productions like Oklahoma and living in a lavish mansion next to Humphrey Bogart, to sleeping in cheap hotels while waiting for callbacks for stage roles in London. Gloria made no secret of the fact that she liked men. We don't need a man to support us, she told her sister. That we can do for ourselves. We just need a man to entertain us. Graham's love life was often as troubled as her professional career. She was married no less than four times, with only one of her marriages lasting beyond four years. In 1946, Gloria filed for divorce from her first husband, actor Stanley Clements, after less than a year of marriage. During their separation, the couple worked out their problems and decided to get back together. However, their toxic relationship once again came to an end after Gloria filed for an annulment in 1948 citing that Stanley was physically abusive. The same day that the annulment was finalised, Gloria, who was four months pregnant with her first child, Timothy, got married for the second time. This time she said, I do, to director Nicholas Ray, best known for his work on Rebel Without a Cause. Nicholas later admitted that he was infatuated by her, Gloria, but I didn't like her very much. At 29, she was already two divorces deep into a turbulent romantic life, one from allegedly abusive actor Stanley Clements, the other from director Nicholas Ray, with whom she had a son, Timothy. The Scandal That Rocks the Cradle In June 1951, Nicholas Ray caught her in bed at their Malibu home with Tony, his 13-year-old son from his first marriage, who just returned from military school. 
The explosive tryst would only be reignited nine years later when Graham married Tony Ray. She had two children with him. The union made Tony the stepfather to his half-brother Timothy, the child Ray had fathered with Graham. Tony was 23, Graham was 37, and they kept their new relationship a secret until the Hollywood tabloids found out about it in 1962 and roasted them for it. The way the public handled the news of her relationship with Tony resulted in Gloria suffering a major breakdown. The early years of the Gloria-Tony marriage were so contentious and stressful that Gloria endured a brief mental breakdown and eventually underwent shock treatments in 1964 to help clear her mind of her troubles. Despite everything, she managed to come out on top and make her marriage work for a while. In fact, her marriage to Tony lasted longer than any of her other ones. Her Hollywood peers recognised her arrival as a serious actress, nominating her performance for an Oscar, her second career nod following 1947's Crossfire. When presenter Edmund Gwen called Graham's name as the winner, however, she carried herself to the stage atop quivering heels, with a deer-in-the-headlights expression plastered on her face. She accepted with four words, thank you very much, before rushing out of sight to a collective affectionate chuckle from the audience. But this was no false modesty. Gloria was one of the most insecure girls I've ever met, says Terry Moore, Graham's friend and fellow supporting actress nominee. I thought supporting was the kind of award you win when you're older. I felt unqualified then, but Gloria always felt unqualified. What read in the room as a bashful star's brief, but no less endearing, display of humility quickly snowballed into a scandal for Graham. Rumours circulated that she'd rebuked the honour after getting drunk at the event, which caused her to trip and curse en route to claim the prize, none of which was true. She did, however, decline to sit for post-victory interviews, a move that didn't court new fans among Tinseltown's ruthless band of gossip columnists. Sadly, following her Oscar victory, the beauty Graham embodied so artfully on screen never reflected the personal turmoil festering under the surface. I suffered from a really bad attack of Oscar fright, and I don't think I've recovered from it yet, Graham told Silver Screen magazine the summer after she won the coveted award. In subsequent years, her image hardened as the mysterious bad girl of noir cinema in films like The Big Heat and Human Desire, until in 1954 she began filming the adaptation of Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein's musical Oklahoma as the girl who can't say no, Adu Annie, the same year she married writer, producer Cy Howard. She was pushed and belittled by the crew and stumbled her way through because she felt so inadequate doing a musical, remembers Graham's niece Vicky Mitchum, claiming it was her aunt's Oklahoma colleagues who instigated a hostile working environment after learning Graham couldn't carry a tune despite her Academy verified status. Everybody told her how horrible she was. Graham herself may not have been an innocent party. She allegedly assaulted co-stars Charlotte Greenwood and Jean Nelson on separate occasions and purposely stepped on scene partners' lines. Scarred by her Oklahoma experience, Graham scaled back her work to care for her children in 1955, divorced Howard in 1957 and married former stepson Tony Ray, son of Nicholas, in 1960. Later, when she battled Howard for custody of their daughter, Mariana Paulette, rumours circulated that Graham had initially seduced Tony when he was just 13, news that, along with her tarnished professional reputation, made her a Hollywood outcast. I married Nicholas Ray, the director, people yawned. Later on, I married his son, and from the press's reaction, you'd have thought I was committing incest or robbing the cradle. In 1980, Graham was diagnosed with stomach cancer, but refused to have surgery. While in England in 1981, she had her stomach drained, which resulted in a perforated bowel, and she collapsed during a stage rehearsal. Despite medical treatment, she was in a serious condition, and her children took her back to New York City, where she died shortly afterwards. Her last film role was that of Florinda in The Nesting, 
filmed before she went to England but released just after her death. In her final days, Gloria had turned her back on Hollywood, which had shunned her. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Gloria Graham? Gloria was described as a serious, skillful actress, spontaneous, honest and strong-willed, imaginative and curious, incredibly sexy, but insecure about her looks.